Hi y'all, I promised to do a video or share some recipes of my dehydrated food and how I did it and what I did. And so I'm gonna make a stab at this and just show you my way of doing it. But just remember your own recipes will work just fine this way. So don't be afraid to experiment. I'll show you what I've done and what I did as far as store-bought and then also my mistakes because it's always good to see those too. So what I've done is laid out for you on my picnic table. Uh, there's Agatha in the background waiting patiently. These are all the foods that I've done for this um, six week, seven week trip. Whether it'll last that long, I'm not sure, but uh, this is what I've done. And I, uh, all of this has to fit into the shelf space on the back of my tab that is as wide as the tab, but only nine inches deep. And that's my challenge. And that's the challenge in bringing canned foods and, and uh, broths and things like that. There just isn't space. So that's kind of why I started this. I made a mistake last summer bringing all these canned goods and uh, then I'd open them and then I'd have half opened canned goods and it was really wasteful. So this is my stab at this and so far it's working really well. So let me show you first and foremost some of the things I've done. So this is a bunch of bananas that I did, and they work out really well in um, oatmeal or uh, pretty much anything that you want just to snack on. I'm not a big banana eater, but they actually have tasted pretty good in oatmeal with some walnuts, and I've got some of those I'll show to you. This, um, sadly, is was a whole watermelon that I dehydrated. And I've got a piece out for you because the ants are really, really wanting this badly. So I've got it closed up nice and tight. But this is watermelon jerky. And what you do is take the watermelon and slice it into pretty thick, you wouldn't believe it, but watermelon's mostly water, uh, pretty thick slices in just, I cut it into quarters thick, and then I cut those quarters into jerky sized pieces this length. And it shrinks down to this and it's nice and chewy you can see there are some seeds in it uh, these particular seeds in this watermelon i think it was probably a seedless watermelon but they're perfectly fine to eat they die you don't even taste them they, they dehydrate down and it's just like candy it's very pliable and chewy like uh, fruit chews would be so before summer's over chances are very good i'm going to buy a couple more of those I made the mistake, however, of keeping them in the front seat of my car, which means I snacked on them this entire drive up here. So that was a lot more full. So the moral of the story is don't put them in the front seat if you're a bored eater like I am. So I just wanted to share a little bit about my spices. I know some uh, ladies talk about they have to have their spices. I probably an overboard in the spice department because Honestly, I'm not sure how often I will use all of these, but this has been my camping spice kit even back when I was a tent camper, and I just refill it as needed, and so I label it, and I think this was a uh, something from the bead department. It's something I had already, so it may not be food safe, but you know, something's gonna kill you, so that's not a big deal for me. It's this is sriracha that I put in here, and then, of course, I don't have enough spices, so I had to Put some more in and this is actually quite clever this is actually a pill container that stacks up higher and so i may eventually replace this replace this with this and only have as many i think there's seven and they just screw in top of each other because anytime you can go vertical on storage you're a lot better off so that works pretty well and then these are some mistakes, and so I'm going to show them to you now. Uh, coconut oil isn't a mistake. These containers you can just get in the um, craft store in the icing section, like where Wilton is. But honestly, how, how much sugar-free syrup is one going to really eat? I don't even eat pancakes and waffles, but I just thought it would be a great idea because I might. And so that's a mistake. That take, Look how much space that takes, too. Agave nectar. I do use that, but probably not a container of that large. These guys are great. These are from the Mio bottles. Um, Dasani makes some drops as well. Take off the containers and then relabel them. I've got mustard, I've got some Worcestershire sauce, and I've got some sherry vinegar. And that actually are good, they're very good ideas. And I keep them in there, they don't tip over. Two more mistakes that I made this trip. This one is just nothing but white table sugar, which I almost never eat. 
but I got in my mind I'm going up into rhubarb country we don't get rhubarb in South Florida or if we do it's really expensive well I just might make something with rhubarb and so I brought this and look how much space it takes up rather than if I do get rhubarb actually stopping at a little store and buying a very small bag which would be not much money and putting it if I needed it so don't buy don't bring things like I do that I might need bring things that you will need and then go from there Sec second is this minute rice I did the same thing I had a box of minute rice which I don't eat very much of but I bought it for specifically for this trip and then discovered I can actually make my own meals cooking my own rice so but I brought it because gee golly whiz I might need that minute rice so look how much space those two take up in my limited space already so these are fails these don't work very well this is the cozy cup that uh, when I put my dehydrated meals into I put it in a mug here and I close that up you can get instructions for cozy cups on YouTube anywhere but it's just that reflectix that you can get in the insulation section at Lowe's or Home Depot works great one thing I do enjoy is I like um, iced tea so what I do is I buy this cold brew this is Louisiana cold brew but Twinnings also makes a, a cold brew and I put it in my big Tervis tumbler in the morning and then I just use the same tea bag and add water to it all day and that works fantastic this is an idea I stole off of Pinterest I think and it actually works pretty well I, I kind of them in a magpie and I hoard things when I go visiting I belong to um, I guess this is home chef for a while and they send you the perfect size so if I already had it at the house I just save these little packets of things I've got crushed red pepper because you know heaven forbid I actually run out of anything look at <laughs> I've got tartar sauce I've got cheese so any little packet like this I think I'm in love with these little packets and I just throw them in here I think I've probably got enough I should probably stop myself so uh, people should stop me if they know me. This could be a hoarding situation. Same with these darling little things. Aren't they the cutest little things? I got balsamic vinegar. That one is already partially open. That would be a nice mess. White wine vinegar. I've got my children gave this in a stocking. So heaven forbid I get rid of that chipotle sauce because you know we need a lot of those. Here's some little soy sauces I've got in here. So probably this could be scaled way back, but those are my fails. Those are things that actually don't work terribly well. But the container works well because it goes in the same cabinet with all of these and I can access it, but it isn't, uh, it's too much stuff. So here's the food I dehydrated. Now, um, in another video, I showed my uh, burritos, but if you've got anything in your pantry, this is a thing of salsa that actually, uh, I think it's just a jar of salsa that I did puree. So it's, um, it's smoother and so you get this leather when you dehydrate it and it looks like that this is also salsa but it's I didn't puree it so it's still got the chunks in it so depending on what you're gonna use it for this is great for things where you actually want the flavor uh, and the chunks of the, the peppers and this is great if you're just adding flavor to something and a lot of these things I just had in my pantry I had a few tomatoes that were gonna go bad so I dehydrated just sliced tomatoes. These would go great on top of, well, anything you want tomatoes in, but great on top of the salad. And um, they're really flavorful. The flavor comes packs when you dehydrate, and they're amazing. Here's some tomato sauce. I had, uh, I had a container of tomato puree that I had opened. I bought it by mistake and then put it in the freezer. And so I ended up making some homemade tomato sauce with it and then just made leather out of it and it's really pretty good so I can add that to this pasta if I want to make a pasta sauce so you can start seeing really we're building ingredients that you would put in any recipe that you have just dehydrate it down and then rehydrate it together for your recipe here's a jar of pizza sauce that I had at the house um, I'm gonna be gone for a long time so I pretty much cleaned out my fridge and my cupboards that's what you're getting you're getting a slice of the, into what I keep in my pantry. There's some pizza sauce that's in there. And then move down here. This is a recipe of black beans and rice. And so I had, I found a one can of black bean soup. Why I had a can of black bean soup, I'm not sure, but I did. 
And so I just cooked it up, added some seasonings, and cooked it with some rice, mixed it in there, and just dehydrated the whole recipe. And I did put some um, lemon slices in there, and I'll show you those in a minute. And so I'll add some chicken to this when I'm ready to cook it up, and probably some of my tomato sauce and my peppers, and just kind of make a Spanish um, black beans and rice. This is chicken. This is four, four pounds of chicken, of white chicken. Now the reason they recommend, and I say they, these are all those many YouTubers out there who give us tutorials, but the reason they recommend canned chicken is that it's uh, pressure cooked immediately. And so you get, it rehydrates much, much better than real chicken, real chicken, than fresh chicken that you've cooked and dehydrated down. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't rehydrate well for all the experts. This rehydrates really well, but you can see what it comes down to. This is four whole cans of chicken. It looks a little like sawdust, but it actually rehydrates pretty good. It's tasty. I've had it in a couple recipes already. And this is the ground beef that I should have made more of. So I seem to like this the most. I throw it in everything. So it's just your the leanest ground beef that you can get your hands on. Lean, lean, lean. This is not where you want to go for that chuck flavor. This is lean because it's the fat that spoils. And add your seasonings to it, whatever seasonings you want. And the key for rehydrating it and it and tasting good is when you're mixing it up raw, uh, mix in a half a cup of dry bread crumbs to, to one pound. So if you're doing two pounds, it'd be a cup and do it accordingly. Then you brown it off. You blot out any grease. What I've done is I put it in a colander lined with paper towels and then I put more paper towels on it and I just kind of squeeze and that got and these have held up really really well. They're called gravel in the backpacking world. You can see why because they look just like gravel but they rehydrate delicious. They're they're absolutely delicious and so you can make chili. So imagine taking all your ingredients that you have in chili and then just putting together chili. You can make it for one person, you can make it for a whole family. So you don't have all those cans that would go with chili. This is some lemon peel. <laughs> because I can't waste anything, and I was doing some lemons for my sister-in-law, and I'm gonna show you those in a minute, and there were some end pieces, and so I ground them up and put them on the dehydrator, and I got lemon peel. That, but I think they'd be great in pasta, like a chicken pasta lemon peel flavor, so. That doesn't take too much space, so I'm not going to call that a fail at this point. We'll see. I'll keep you tuned on that. Uh, this is, I don't remember how many pounds of mushrooms, but mushrooms, again, a lot of water, dehydrate down to nothing, but rehydrate beautifully. So omelets, um, I'm going to make a stroganoff uh, later on, and I'm going to tell you in a minute about what I'm going to do with that. But this does really, really well, so mushrooms are terrific. This is a frozen bag of roasted corn that I got at Trader Joe's and so I can add that to any of my Tex-Mex. I can add it to corn chowder. Um, if I do corn chowder, uh, I can add it to any soup, anything. Those rehydrate well and it's roasted corn and you just take fresh corn. You do steam it for a few minutes. I didn't steam it too terribly long because I don't like my corn overcooked but I steamed it for a little bit and then you just dehydrate it and it works great. These are a few stalks of celery that I just happened to have in the fridge and I knew they were gonna go bad. So that's just celery that chopped up and dehydrated and it's not much in there, but that's actually probably half a half a head of celery. Uh, here is a whole jar of Rotel. Had Rotel in my pantry and man, that dehydrated down and the flavors are intense. So I like spicy food, so no worries there. That's a whole jar of Rotel and that's in a snack bag if you can see. So here are a couple cans of black beans and so uh, with canned beans you don't have to cook them. All you do is just take them out, drain them um, and I do rinse them because they've got some of that residue that I, I don't typically like. It'll, it'll color your foods. So if you're using black beans it'll color it. But those are black beans and then uh, here are some red beans. So if I want chili, I've got all my ingredients pretty much all right here for chili. A few carrots that I had, because I was going to have to throw them away because I don't eat a lot of carrots, but some carrots. Now those are dehydrated for meals. Green onions or scallions, depending on what part of the country you live in. 
there this my friend has a garden she gave me a whole bunch of basil this is a whole bunch of basil dehydrated down so I can throw that with my if I want to do my pasta and my lemon um, pasta lemon basil let's throw some green onions in here maybe some mushrooms and chicken and that sounds like a really nice pasta meal so you're getting the, the hang of this right this is just some odds and ends of pasta you can see I've got different shapes in there but a little of this and a little of that I did cook it I did uh, take it out just shy of the cooking time uh, just because I didn't want to overcook it and then this you just put boiling water on it and it rehydrates in like 10 minutes so that's great beef jerky which is the standard um, some spinach that I had that was gonna go bad this is close to probably a pound of spinach and it comes down to almost nothing but that would go great in that cost as well so I'm really got all my ingredients for recipes this is corn bark and I'm gonna uh, tell you minute about backpacking chef because I got a lot of these ideas from him this is corn that's been pureed a can of corn and then I added some barbecue sauce to it and that would be great in a chowder or anything that you want some thickness to also this is plain corn now I am not as thrilled with this plain corn um, it's it's cream corn actually that it's a bark and you can see it's like all the other barks you can make bark with uh, you can make mashed potatoes um, with bark but what you want to do with mashed potatoes is you use a either a non-fat um, for, for this is for flavor non-fat broth or a vegetable broth because remember fat is what goes bad so but you can make just regular mashed potatoes that you would make up don't put any fat in it other than use your broth to flavor it put it on the dehydrator spread it out thin and dehydrate it until it gets bark like and then you've got your own homemade mashed potatoes. I had already bought some store-bought mashed potatoes, so I didn't do that, but next time that's what I'll do. Uh, this is some green beans that I had from my daughter and her husband came over. So I dehydrated the rest of those. It's a few green peppers that I had left over. And then these are the refried beans that I did make from scratch. Just a couple cans of pinto beans that I cooked with some onions, garlic, cumin, and uh, I think maybe some chili powder. Spread them out on the dehydrator. It dehydrated them so that they're kind of gravelly and you want them to be good and dry. And these rehydrate beautifully. You'd never in a million years know. You could serve this to your family. They'd never have a clue that you had dehydrated. So I'm almost there, y'all. So these are then some biscuit mixes that I made up. Um, I didn't dehydrate those, so these are for my breakfast and I kind of keep them separate. These are frozen hash browns that I did dehydrate. So even though they're already dried, you put them, just put them frozen or thaw them first, put them on the dehydrator and then you can cook them up just how you would cook up anything. So speaking of that, I have some ghee, but I don't know if I brought it out here. Yeah, here it is. So this is ghee and it is basically clarified butter. And I don't, I didn't have any butter powder. Butter is one of those things that's hard. You got to always keep it. Uh, mine, I might, my, my, I grew up. We kept butter on the counter, but it actually spoils when I can't because it's so hot. And ghee doesn't, so you don't have to refrigerate this. It's just clarified butter, and it has a higher smoking point than regular butter. So you can actually kind of fry up some things. So, so this with some dried onions is perfect. That's a great. A hash brown or a side dish for any neat dish that you're doing. Now I got industrious and I made up some recipes in advance which I won't do again. So here's a tortilla that I put together, tortilla soup mix. Here's the shepherd's pie that I just took all the ingredients. I, I put the um, powdered uh, mashed potatoes separately so it doesn't mix all in because you'll want to rehydrate those separately and then you rehydrate these together. Layer them on and then you add some um, of this beef gravy mix which I won't buy again because I've learned I can make my own beef gravy mix so why would I buy somebody else's these are the only store-bought items that I have everything else is homemade so uh, these I got at the dollar store I have never used powdered <laughs> potatoes in my life they're actually not terrible which shocks me maybe they were once terrible but they're not this uh, these are little packets of um, 
tomato paste that I bought. I wouldn't do this again. It's just more than I need, especially now that I know that tomatoes do so well. These individual cheese um, slices travel very well because they're, they're already sealed and air doesn't get through them. And cheese lasts quite a while. It's when air gets to it that it doesn't work so well. So these are great and throw them on tortillas and, and pour out the hot ingredients and they'll melt down or they're just good for snacks. And then these were buy one, get one free a couple weeks before I left. And so I went ahead and stocked up on these. And with these, of course, once you open them, you need to refrigerate them. So what I'll do is I'll plan my day's meal. Bacon never lasts too long with me, so I'm not too worried about it. But I'll have bacon for breakfast and then I'll have maybe BLTs for lunch and then maybe bacon and something for dinner. And that'll be one of these. And of course, who can resist spam? Seriously, I, I mean, I don't even know what to say about that. Why would anybody want to resist spam? And they make these single serving containers and so you can use it anywhere you'd use ham or throw it in some pasta dishes. And if you're turning up your nose, well, then don't use it, it's a choice. I also use deviled ham a lot and so I don't have that in here. And that's pretty much it. I do have some ramen noodles I bought. Don't know if I'm gonna use them or not. Now, all of this stuff goes into these containers. And I found these are great things. I found these at the dollar store and what I like about them is they're tall and they're thin. And I can get all of these, in fact, all of these, came, all of this stuff came out of those containers. So it shows you how compact everything goes and they all fit in the back of the, the camper in my little galley area there. Now in my coffee area, I wanna show you a couple things. So what I do, this is a 12 volt, um, 12 volt coffee, hot water heater. It's great, it works terrific, but I don't know if you can see, but it's a very small capacity. It's just maybe 10 ounces. So I'm really happy with it on the road. I'm not really happy with it when I'm in camp and I want to have a larger meal, um, but it works great for coffee. So what I do is I just take my coffee I have this little pour over um, thing you can buy in any grocery store, number two containers. You put the coffee in it, you put the filter in it, you put the filter then the coffee, or you have a mess, and then your hot water and let it drip through and it works fine. This is heavy cream and I'm a little bit of a coffee snob as far as what I put in my coffee. I can't stand coffee mate. So I found this um, and it works great. It's, I got it on Amazon, it's probably $14. And then I found this little guy, which is a little whisker thing, if I can turn it off. It was like four bucks at Tuesday morning or Home Goods or one of those little places, it's battery operated. This doesn't mix real well. It does, uh, you have to stir and stir and stir. But I found with this little whisker, I almost get like a latte. It works fantastic. So when I'm traveling in the car, I'll heat up water with this. And then what I've been doing is I'll show you my breakfast. Here's some oatmeal that packets that I put together. And this particular packet has some uh, dried mango and some coconut that I toasted, and then some seeds and some oatmeal and some cream powder. And then I'll just make that like on a roadside stand and that works really, really well. And then um, somewhere I have, oh here, these are four mangoes that I dehydrated down to leather. And those, I haven't snacked on those yet because they've actually been in these bags. So I'm gonna pretend I haven't seen them, otherwise they'll be gone before I get to Maine. But those are about four mangoes that dehydrate and I, I put them on just still the parchment paper so that they don't stick together because they're a little sticky. And then these are my lunch items. And you can laugh, you can be a hater, but dun dun dun. dun. I actually joined this for a while and then I had leftover food. We won't talk about why I had leftover food, but they actually do fine with this little container here. And I usually doctor it up. I'll, uh, this particular uh, mac and cheese, I will put um, either some mushrooms or some chicken or some beef into it and just doctor it up a little bit, which uh, <laughs> I'm just using those up. I, don't, I wouldn't obviously buy it again. And then I've bought these and they're fine, but now that I know how to do this a little better, I wouldn't do them again. I would just get my own styrofoam cups, make my own, put some press and seal over them, and then have them ready for the road. But I'll pull over on a roadside stand. I'll plug this in about 20 minutes, 
before I need it um, for the hot water, pull over a roadside stand, take my little picnic out to a picnic table, make my lunch up, and then I'm good to go. So that actually works really, really well. We've got some tortillas, and then this, uh, these are some lemons and limes that I dehydrated for my sister-in-law, and they're, they've worked out really great. Now, I'm wondering if I didn't do them long enough because they're a little soft, but so far they haven't started spoiling. So, and so what I do is I throw them in my little Tervis tumbler uh, with my iced tea bag, and I have them all through the day, and they, they infuse my water. So that's my video on how I do my food. Hope it helps.